Hello. Okay, hopefully I'm live. Now this is the first time I've done this, so I've just got my phone with me just to check, hopefully, that I can see the feed as well. But and we've got one person with me. Uh, I'm just going to check for a little while and let a few people join, hopefully. Uh, even if if even if there isn't a huge number of people going to join me today, um, the main reason that I well, wanted to put together this Facebook Live um, and have it as a resource going forward is that I get asked the same questions um, by a lot of different people um, and I find myself saying the same answers. So I thought the best thing to do was to a have a open session where you can ask questions but also that I can use it as a resource going forward um, and that it would save me repeating myself over and over again so hopefully that's going to work I'm still just trying to uh, see what my uh, my own timeline's doing or whether it's going to pop up but hopefully I'm not talking to no one um, I'm actually in my dog room so it looks a bit messy and I've tried to block out some of the light so hopefully the contrast isn't too bad for you to watch um, and I actually have got a dog with me in the room because I wanted to use her as an example for the cytology testing and because I know a few people get a little bit freaked out on how far they should put it in the swab and not and all that kind of thing so I thought it's just easier to show people okay so as i say any interaction is good so little likes i know you could do your likes and then share this as well because i know a lot of breeders and you've got breeder friends so the more information that gets shared the better okay and also you can interact with me and and uh, make some comments and that kind of thing so that'd be much appreciated especially if i'm yabbing on um or not okay so what i'm going to cover is uh, ovulation testing for dogs why it's important and um, how it can make your life easier as a breeder and for the life of the dogs as well. Um, uh, also the stud dog, but also at the opposite end of knowing when she's due as well. And there's a fair few different techniques that are available. Um, and some are tried and tested, some are not. I'm going to go with what I think. Hello, Sarah. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm going to recommend two particular techniques that I think are really good. I'm going to cover what is also available. Um, and I know being out and about scanning. So uh, for the people that don't know me, I am um, a mobile pet pregnancy scanner, but I also cover ovulation testing. I cover mating assistance. Um, you know, semen evaluations, all kind of sorts. So once people know about me, um, they're uh, quite shocked that we, there's a few of us in the country now as well. So the people are quite shocked that we exist and uh, we are here to help you and we'll make your life as easy as possible and as simple as possible. Um, because once you decide to breed, you kind of do want to litter and uh, subject to what people think is actually sometimes harder than what you, you think it might be. Um, it all depends on the breeds that you've got, um, you know, the experiences of your stud dog and your maiden bitch and all that kind of thing. So it, it all comes sort of out in the wash. But, you know, we're here as a resource and we'll help people. And I found that going out scanning, I'm talking one to one when actually I could talk to one to 100 or eight as it is at the moment. Um, but OK, ovulation testing. So you've got various um, options. Uh, some people go and use a super stud dog um, and I call them super stud dogs because they will only mate the bitch when they're ready. Um, these are few and far between, but they do exist. But the problem you have is that you can have a lot of to and fro in. If it's your bitch, you're going to mate a lot of to and fro in, knowing whether that day is the right day or not. Um, and a lot of wasted time, energy, effort and sitting potentially in traffic. Um, you're also, as a, I call them, the horny bitches um, that will only be mated uh, when their days are ready. So when they've ovulated is when they're ready to be mated. Um, the problem is, hello, everybody. Thank you for making comments. Um, the problem that you have with these girls is that, again, it's a lot of to and fro in unless they're giving you signs that you can pick up on at home. Um, such as flagging, so lifting their tail, uh, lifting their mini, moo moo, whatever people want to call it, vagina. Um, they basically lift it if it hits the roof kind of thing. If you do a little tickle around their back end, then that's a sign that they're ready. 
Um, but you will have some girls that are flirty dirty, as I call it all the time, and they're, they're ramming in every, anybody's faces to get some attention. So they're not always the best to go by. I know some breeds, they will just pick certain dates. So they will mate on day 11 and day 13 regardless. And um, they have some success, they have some misses. The problem with this is that 60% of bitches are going to do your average. They're going to do your 11 to 13. Um, some breeds generally go later. So from my experience, Labradors would be generally 14 to 16. And working breeds tend to go a little bit later. Um, but you still got the 20%, the 20% that go early and you're going to have missed them and the 20% that go late. So potentially you're mating her when she's not ready. It's going to be a difficult mating. You get stressed, she gets stressed. The stud dog's not happy. The stud owner feels under pressure. So personally, all round, I think just doing some form of ovulation testing is better than none. Um, we have options out there. We have fairly cheap options such as ovulation pads so i get spoken to about this quite a lot some love them some hate them um all i can say is show me the med medical evidence of how and why they work um and then i might be interested um so i'm going to leave it there with those some people use these saliva microscopes i must admit i've had no experience with them again some people love them some people swear by it some people don't um i think with any any technique it's it's a skill it's a craft and actually if you have a number of females to try it on then it's probably the likelihood you'll be able to work out whether it does work or not but if you're one of those you have one bitch or two bitches and you only mate once a year then it's going to be quite difficult to build up that pattern which also brings me on to the Draminsky. Um, now, I know I just see lots for sale on eBay, uh, which makes me think, if they work, why do people keep selling them on? Um, again, I think it is something that if you have a lot of bitches and you stick with it and you're consistent and you do it every day, you possibly can start to build up some patterns. But it's having that patience and persistence, which a lot of people don't have, or again, you don't have the number of bitches to do that with. So that brings me on to cytology. Now, for me, um, if you're a breeder, this is something that puts the power in your hands, something you can have control of, A, that you can either learn to do, or B, that there are people out there offering it as a service. OK, and what cytology is, is using a swab to collect some vaginal cells that then can be processed um, and it's tracking the difference of the cells so the estrogen will actually change what the cells look like so and, and anyone that knows me i always say they go from smooth baked beans to cornflakes and i was going to have those props handy but i didn't have time for that um but once they're cornflakes is once they're cornified and she's ready to be mated she's ovulated or in the process of ovulation and is ready um i always try and have a conversation with the owners and tie that in with what she's doing in herself is she still bleeding heavily is she drying up all those kind of things as well the benefits of cytology um and they say it does involve um, well, let me show you a swap. I have got, I've got some props, um, but basically, oh no, this one. basically, what gets sent out for anyone that uses our services is. Oh, I'm checking it all around now. Just, oh, which you probably can't see because of the light. It's not too great, but that's just um, infrastructure. Oh, instructions basically of how to take the swab when to start all that kind of thing and some of the swabs okay so i'm going to show you i might leave it to the end just in case if it does all go wrong um but basically let me, i haven't aced out my camera skills yet but this is a sterile swab okay and it is a case of pacing the lighting's a little bit dodgy but i always say if this is the edge of the vagina you want to go up, straighten it out, and then go in. And also almost like collect the cells there and take them out. But I'm going to show you that. Some are easier than others. Some girls like to be a little bit of a drama queen, um, which A, is sometimes a sign that she's not ready in itself because if she's ha not happy with this going up and this is tiny compared to the real deal, how skinny this is, um, it's probably a sign that she is um, she's not ready yet. Um, some girls just like to be a drama queen because it's their mum, dad or whatever doing it. Um, so sometimes I have people bring their dogs to me just to collect the swab 
uh, which obviously I can process straight away. Uh, but it seems to be if it's a third person with a bit of confidence of knowing what they're doing, then, you know, the drama's over. Um, but I am going to show you that on one of my own. So I'm hoping that's going to work out quite well. Um, but with regards to the cytology, it's, it's one of my preferred because we're actually looking at the cells. So it's not what worries me like with the Draminsky uh, or the ovulation pads is you're relying on a third party to translate what's happening to tell you what you need to do. Where with the cytology, you are looking at those cells and with your own mind or whoever's doing it, you're making that decision of what it's telling you or not. Um, and as I, get, as I say, it's something that you can send off for someone to do, or if you've got a lot of breeding bitches, it's probably worth buying your own microscopes. Nothing doesn't have to be too fancy. Um, buying the stains yourself, um, which I probably can show you what they look like roughly, um, and just learning the skill, you know, just basically training your eye on seeing what those differences are and doing your dogs and your friends' dogs and that kind of thing. But it's such a low cost, easy technique that's just way better than just guessing dates okay um the majority of the cytology that i run uh, particularly in the smaller breeds um i recommend with all ovulation testing you start testing day six and please feel free to ask me any questions i know i'm rabbiting on uh, but please ask any questions to me and i'll answer them as we go um, but I always recommend start testing day six of season. So the first day you see blood is day one. OK, start testing day six. Um, if you have a working breed, so your Labradors, Pointers, GSDs, you probably could afford to push back to day nine. I wouldn't leave it any later for any breed than day nine. Again, if you think, say you've missed her before, you've bred her before you missed her, um, then I would probably stick with day six because she could have been an early one and you've, you've missed her way over. Um, but always, as I say, day six, some you can afford to push back to day nine, but never any later than that um, with any of the ovulation testing. OK. Um, but yeah, so in regards to the cytology, it's quite nice. Um, you don't have to take it to the vet. You can collect the swab yourself. You can either process it yourself or in the case of using me, you stick it in the post. I'll get it next day. I generally um, process the cells and I will take a picture of what I can see and I send that back with what my recommendation is. Um, the cytology, you need to test every three days. OK, so if you start day six, she's not ready, then you go in day nine, you go in day 12, you go in day 15. Um, but to say it's no big dramas because she's at home. You can do it yourself. You can pop it in the post. OK, but again, any questions, please message me. Um, but it's good to see people join me. So I'm quite pleased with that. Um, so your other options that you have um, is the progesterone testing. Um, it's the most accurate way to tell whether your female's ovulated. And the whole point is, if you know when she's ovulated, you know when to mate. If you know when to mate, you know that's the most optimal time to mate, which A, should be less stress for everybody because you know she's ready. It should mean a bigger litter size because you know that she's, it's her optimal time. So I always say to people when there are some breeds that are more difficult than others. So notoriously bulldogs are difficult to breed. Anyone that doesn't progesterone test bulldogs are crazy because even if you spend 400 pounds on your blood, you know, your ovulation testing and that kind of thing, one extra puppy, you've got that back anyway. You're, you're never going to be down. It's never going to cost you. You're always only really going to gain from it. And if you did get small litter, you're probably glad you got a litter because she's probably a nightmare girl that you probably possibly could have not had anything. Um, so for the more expensive breeds, for the puppies that sell for more money, you're crazy not to test. For the people, yeah, they're not as expensive. But for instance, Labradors, most people, when I scan, they, in Labradors, you know, they're the most popular breed in the country. So people want big litters because they've always got a waiting list. So why would you not ovulation test just to know that you can meet that demand? You know, if you're breeding strong, healthy puppies, you know, from fit adults, then why not meet that demand um, and you know a little bit of planning up front and as I say with all these things just try and think about just don't leave it to the day she's in season because that's when you're not gonna plan what you need to do and um, you know it's all last minute you're all a bit frantic and um, so I always think 
think do it now i'm doing this now if your bitch isn't due in for another three four months sort it out now you know we send out kits to people i'd rather people have them and never need them than last minute say i need it tomorrow because obviously i've got customers to service i don't want to stand in the post office all day sending bits and bobs out so just plan as early as possible right i'm going to answer a few questions um so comparing cytology versus progesterone, which one is more accurate based on your experience? Hands down, progesterone testing is the most accurate. Um, what some people do, and obviously I haven't covered the progesterone yet, but what some people do um, is they combine the two. So they will actually run cytology for a fair while. Once the cells start, start to change, then to find the optimal time to make, they run a blood, blood test just to pinpoint exactly when to breed, uh, which I think works quite nicely because the thing with the blood testing, which we're going to come on to, is that um, if you've got a late ovulator, that could mean a lot of blood tests and that nobody wants to make their dog into a pincushion. Um, so the cytology kind of saves some of that and works quite well um, with balancing the two out. But progesterone is most accurate without a doubt. Um, and also the progesterone will tell you um, things that you didn't know. So uh, somebody asked when I first posted up, I was going to run this um, Facebook Live about do all females ovulate, even if they're flagging and lifting and bleeding, do they ovulate? And no, they don't all ovulate. Um, it's very low, but I have had a few dogs where um, they look like they're going to ovulate. So their numbers go up in the progesterone, which I'm going to cover, um, but they never actually get to the key number and they start going back down again. Yet they've been lifting, they've been flagging, they've been doing, you know, all the signs that you think they were going to do. Um, and also you can have split seasons. So they look like they're doing everything as they should do. Uh, they don't ovulate and you wouldn't know that unless you tested three weeks later they come back in again and it's actually the latter half that they ovulate on and if you mated on the beginning half you kind of think well what do I do should I shan't I and that kind of thing so the blood testing tells you the invisible you can't see it but you're going to have evidence what's actually going on and um, there was a question oh, let me scroll up a bit if I can or can I not Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I think I've missed the question and I can't scroll back up. Um, OK, I think I did miss the question, but re-ask it if I don't answer it. Um, someone has asked, do you get bigger litters when tested? Yes, without a doubt. Um, if you're putting in, you're, you're basically mating at the most optimal time. And um, how it works is that um, with the blood testing, what it tell you, all we want to do is identify ovulation. Once she's ovulated, you add 48 hours because the eggs need to mature. That's your most optimal time to mate. So with the blood testing, my job is to get you to ovulation, not to get to mate immediately. Um, though mate immediately does happen. And I had it with my own litter. Um, I actually, you know, blood tested day six. Didn't think she was ready at all. Um, you know, I, I didn't rush anything. I come back because I, I can. I started running blood at 11 o'clock at night to come back at 15 nanograms, which we're going to come on to, um, which was mate immediately. And she didn't actually start lifting and flagging until two days after her last mating. So and I got a litter of nine. And that was a day six uh, well, day seven, technically mating. Um, because though your days are your days and I did say, um, you know, from the first day of blood, is day one it's so easy to miss if you've got multiple dogs and they clean up and look after each other and the tidy dogs it's quite difficult to be able to track is day one actually day one so when some people say to me oh um my dog ovulated day six uh, well day four sorry even i doubt it was day four it's just that you've missed some of the beginning days um though from my experience, um, you're always going to get one dog that does crazy stuff, but no doubt it's going to be the dog you own, um, never the, you know, never the general populace. OK. Um, right. As I say, feel free to ask any question. But in regards to the progesterone testing, so hang on, because I've dropped my kit. Right. As I say, pre-plan. And um, most people that offer progesterone testing, and now there are, you know, gone are the days of just using vet labs. There are many independent people out there uh, running blood testing, progesterone blood testing. Um, 
they're more flexible they tend to be breeders like myself and um, they know it works so they've gone out invested in the equipment they're offering the service they're open bank holidays weekends you know so generally i'm all going to big up the independent person that's going to run the lab uh, run the bloods um again it's a case of there are different equipment available and um, machine i use myself is calibrated twice a week and i cannot run bloods unless it's calibrated it won't let me and it's actually serviced uh, every four weeks there's different machines out there the accuracy of it is going to be different depending on the machinery and how well it's maintained but i still believe probably a really badly kept machine is still better <laughs> they're not testing um but yeah just put a little bit of thought and question into and, and even ask the people you know some of them might not tell you what machine they've got just because they're aware of sort of other competition that kind of stuff but just ask them about the reliability of it the servicing and that kind of thing and what they do but in regards to the progesterone testing so Blood draws for animals should only be taken by qualified professionals, which be a vet or a vet nurse. Um, I think you have to be more highly qualified taking blood from an animal because they can't speak than a human. Uh, hence why it takes so long to train as a vet. So there are people offering um, this service and they're drawing bloods for you. I would be a little, little bit cautious because um it's all well and good them you know knowing what they're doing but it's when it goes wrong um you know and if you're going to get a blown vein or god forbid they go into an artery or some other, if they're going to try and do a neck draw um so personally i've always recommended to everybody you get your vet and your vet nurse to take the blood now we hopefully you can see these you can send oh god look, my camera skills are rubbish but basically we send you out this and what you've got in here is two bottles and the vet's quite like you don't need to have this uh you know i do service some breeders are frequent breeders and they they just go down the vets and the vets know they're happy just to provide their own bottles and um, but for the if you're if this is going to be the first time conversation with your vet you're best off taking this whole kit down because it looks like you'll know what you're doing that you've made the effort to find out sorry if you can hear patsy she's, she's getting bored um <laughs> and but it just looks like you've done your research and you know what you're doing and again with the planning have the conversation with your vet before you actually need to have the blood draw and um, a lot of them get confused because most vets don't breed themselves and not all vets are pro breeding um so they don't like to be overly um assist well helpful to you or assist you um but basically you just need to say all I need is a vet nurse to draw the bloods. I don't need to pay a consultation. My dog's not ill, um, but I am running progesterone testing to know when to make her. And as I say, we provide these little tubes. Huge conversation over what types of tubes. Um, white, white, plain top. Okay. So no brown, no orange, no red, no green, no purple. Um, it's a plain, empty tube. There is, oh, hang on. There is no gel separator in there, okay? So my preference is no gel separator because that will or can possibly impact the results. Literally, the vet need or the vet nurse needs to draw the blood, put it straight into this bottle, and give it to you. They don't. They try and be over helpful, and they try and say, "Oh, I'll spin the blood for you, and I do this for you." You don't need any of that, okay? So, as you say. We always give out two just so well, I don't know if one gets lost or whatever, but you need one full tube um, half really isn't cutting it. You're risking it because when we spin it down in the centrifuge, we have to take the serum off the top, depending on how dehydrated your dog is or not, will depend on how much um, serum there is. So you're just getting a bit risky. OK, if it's not a full tube. So if you've gone to the effort to go to the vets, to, you know, to fill this up to then either post it to us or to drop if you're local um then just make sure you've got a full tube okay again it comes with instructions instructions that side for the vet to read and tell them what to do and it comes with a form for them to fill in okay right 
but so with the progesterone we then get it this end as i say we've got you know, there are machines that run it uh, there's two types so again have the conversation with your vet some may talk you into premate um premate is a semi quantitative um kit so it's basically they a chemical reaction happens due to the hormone that's in there and it's different shades of blue depending on whether it's blue to white will tell them whether they need to mate or not now how i see blue and how you see blue is totally different so straight away the accuracy of it is 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 questionable at least and um, i mean again how you know that blue and black dress and the gold and cream dress and all that kind of thing just shows to just shows how we see things differently so personally if you're going to go to the effort for the blood draw don't even bother with the pre-made because it's kind of like falling at the last hurdle okay so i'd always say you need to go for the fully quantitative test so you're going to get a number okay now there's two sets of numbers nanomoles and nanograms okay just make sure because you might be having a conversation with the stud dog owner that you're all talking in the same numbers okay and different machines chuck out different numbers so it doesn't matter what they are i believe the nanomole is american the nanograms is european okay so just in regards to the numbers just make sure you're talking the same numbers i work in nanograms so six is ovulation my job is to get you to six 12 will be mate immediately okay is this all making sense any questions because i'm conscious i've rabbited on a bit and um, so feel free to ask any questions but my job is to get you to ovulation and i can advise you when to mate again the progesterone testing is a retest every four days okay so the cytology is every three days the frequency is more um but the progesterone testing is every four days um it may be less because if our numbers are near enough or not quite then you might be recommended to retest it third day generally i don't say every two days i've heard of vets saying they need to test every two days that's overkill way overkill um but as i say what you can do is do the cytology up until a point and then do the progesterone just to pinpoint exactly when you need to mate or whether she just to confirm she has ovulated okay um, but yeah, retest every four days, maybe three days. Um, the results are either, uh, if she is ready, mate immediately, mate in 24 hours, mate in 48 hours. Okay, but all just depending on the number um, will give you an idea of, of, of when that's going to be. So if you're traveling for your stud dog, you definitely want a progesterone test. Um, I had a little mini dance. Um, I'm in Brighton, they're actually going to Scotland. They tested, it was a wise thing to do, and I think they ended up with five pups, so they were happy with that, okay? Um, which date would you start to test? So all ovulation testing, start day six. Um, unless you've got a working breed, you could push back to day nine, um, but if you suspect she could be an early one, then if in doubt, just stick with day six, okay? Um, just sort of in regards to some of the figures going round, they say if you just rely on the dog or the bitch um, or uh, just have set days, you're going to be around 40% successful. If you do the cytology or I guess even the ovulation pads, the saliva, the Jaminski, you, you made a bit of an effort, you're probably up in it to about 65. If you're doing the progesterone testing, it should be easy within the 65 to 90% range. Okay, and as I say, it just gives you, you get the numbers, so it tells you actually what's going on inside that you can't always see. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to try and demonstrate the cytology swab. Um, so I'm hoping this is going to work. As I say, it's just because I know some people, oh, as a breeder, they're just not quite sure. This is, I don't know, 10 centimetres. I don't know how, how long that is. Yeah, I guess 10 or 12 centimeters and people get a little bit panicky of how much should i put in or not this on a miniature schnauzer should disappear so you almost very few breeds can you go too far okay right so bear with me because i'm just gonna have to move bits around and i'm i'm working with a live animal here <laughs> but i did just want to get this in so you can see but hopefully you can see there your pets so this is my angel uh, she come into season 
yesterday. I wasn't quite sure whether she was, so I did actually swab her yesterday, um, and then she actually started dripping blood today. Um, but because I did the swab, so let me just push it. Actually, right. So we're going to go low, straight, and out, and in. Oh, hopefully you can. I don't want to drop my laptop either. Okay. Some people wet it, but you don't need it, right? So it's now in and going up, you straightened out. I'm pushing it all the way in. Whole thing's disappeared. Yeah. Okay. It's quite flexible. She's not bothered. Twist it a few times. Out. It's done. Okay. Hopefully she don't fall off the table. I'm talking to you. And then that's it. Sales collected. So you'd put it back into the sheath that it comes with and post it. Okay. So it's that straightforward. So that's it. I've come to the end of what I kind of wanted to share with you, which is just going through some of the options, why I think some are better than others. Um, to me, cytology is a must for everybody. Whether you learn the skill or not, you can message me on you know, what bits of equipment you might need. I haven't got a problem with that. Or you can use the services that are available. Um, or the fact that blood testing, uh, without a doubt, is the most accurate. But I understand, obviously, it does cost a bit more money. You've got to go to the vets. It's a little bit more inconvenient. You've got to go to the vets. You've got to get the blood draw. You've got to drop it off or get it in the post. I mean, I have a guy that um, he's up in Croydon. So he drives 40 miles to drop his bloods off to me. But I run bloods at 11 o'clock at night. So it makes no difference. But at least he knows what he's doing. Um, and as I say, for some breeds, it's just imperative that um, progesterone testing is the way forward. It saves you a lot of time. As I say, once you decide you want to breed, you just kind of want to get on with it. And as I say, it tells you that information you can't see. So that's it. Is there any questions before before I sign off? But as I say, please feel free to share this. If you want any other kind of Facebook lives on breeding, um, then let me know. Message me or put comments below. Um, I'll try and be as helpful as I can. Hopefully you found this helpful and useful and haven't yabbited on too much. Um, otherwise, thanks for viewing. <laughs> 33 minutes, nearly done. <laughs> okay then, bye. <laughs>